I'm pretending to be Miss Aura D. Clark. She was the first principal and school teacher of Pioneer Schoolhouse. Miss Aura D. Clark was a school teacher who just loved her children. And when she wasn't in the schoolhouse with them in the winter time, she was out in the woods with them in the summertime, teaching them about the trees and the animals and the flowers. Miss Aura D could not be married because that was a rule at that time. You'll learn more about why teachers could not be married. We are all pretending to be school teachers in 1915. I am dressed somewhat like Miss Aura D. Clark may have dressed. Now we're going to go into the world of pretend a little bit more. And in order to do that, I want you to close your eyes. Now I want you to all pretend. You've just stepped out of your cabin. It's November 1915 and you're going to school. It's the first day of school in the Pioneer Schoolhouse. You're walking down the path and you get to the main path and it's cold and it's dark and now I want you to open your eyes. You have arrived at Pioneer Schoolhouse and I am here to see to it that we all get into the schoolhouse in an orderly fashion so that Miss Brown here, who is our historian, can teach you how it came to be that Anchorage is here. You're going to learn a lot of things. More. Okay, here, here, and here. Let them sit and fold their legs to so make sure they have enough room. Now you will form a third row. She's back like the military. If I had white gloves on, I'd be the military police. That's the way they show traffic to go. Okay? Let me sit here. Okay, go down for this line. The Army is known for doing things in rhythm, cadence, cadence. They march, they do everything in rhythm. And the Gandhi dancers would sing. And as they would sing, they would swing their sl uh, sledgehammers. Here's a larger picture here. And so everyone would come down at the same time to drive the spikes into these plates. Mr. President, I have the man for the job. You hire Lieutenant Frederick Mears. He said, get Mears for the job. Now, Frederick Mears was a man he would hire because he was a military man. He said he would not hire anyone but a military man. Why do you think he said that? Because the military can be trusted. The military will finish the work. The military will do the job, and he knew if the job got hard and problems came, this man would not stop the job. He would find a solution. Woodrow Wilson had the man who had finished the Panama Canal come to the Oval Office, and he said, I want a railroad built where? Alaska! All right, now that is better. Well, as soon as she moved from Tent City up to her house up on Government Hill where the railroad <laughs> houses were, she invited the ladies to tea. And she formed the first Anchorage Women's Club. And it's still going today. We are members of the Anchorage Women's Club and we do this just so you will know some of the history of your city. And we are interested in education. We love children. And many of us have been teachers. So we want to make sure you get to know that too.
think about what you did. So, he gets to sit in the dunce chair because he was not a very good little boy at that, at that time, and he played this trick on her. Not a good thing to do. He probably will get in trouble when he gets back home, too. Yes. Yeah. Because teachers and parents are very, very strict. And they didn't put up with that kind of stuff at all. Okay? The kids love it. And we get parents who say, oh, I got to see that when I was in second grade. Here's the cradle that dad probably made. Here's the doll that mom or dad made. Here's a bear that was cut out of a piece of wood. He whittled things out. Here's a little rabbit. And that was toys. Well, hello. So what you up to today? Well... Besides clean. <laughs> <laughs> I am representing Anchorage's first postman, a fellow by the name of Roy Don Chase. Roy Don Chase is uh, important to Anchorage because he's the fellow that named the city. Come on in. This is actually the cabin that Mr. Chase lived in in 1915, as soon as the cabin was built. Uh, and he lived there until October of 1915, when he was replaced as postmaster. I kind of enjoy playing this because it uh, gives me a chance to interact with some kids that aren't my own grandkids. Right. 
uh, they're they're fun to they're fun to talk to. Most of the things in the cabin are are relatively period. The uh, stove is particularly period. It is a coal burning stove, uh, and uh, coal was readily available in Anchorage in 1915. The railroad uh, was bringing coal from Sutton for the trains, and of course the uh, folks of Anchorage had access to the coal. You'll notice that the firebox is actually quite small. It wouldn't do at all for this stove to uh, be used with wood because the firebox is so small. Uh, of course, fires were started with, with uh, tender wood uh, to get things going, but it, it is a coal burning stove. Uh, it's actually a fairly modern stove for 1914. Uh, most of the heating in the place was done with uh, barrel stoves. So this stove could be period. There's nothing to prevent it being period. That kind of barrel was being used to ship, uh, to ship oil in 1914 and 1915 and there would have been oil shipped to uh, Anchorage particularly kerosene and, and things like that. The sewing machine is is very period a treadle machine. Uh, interesting thing about machines in Anchorage is there weren't very many and the reason is that uh, shipping a machine like that to Anchorage costs about two and a half times or more the cost of the machine. They're quite expensive to get here. This cabin was moved from from the town site uh, down to here by by the Explorer Scouts as as an Explorer Scout project. They literally took it apart log by log and brought it down and reassembled it here. Make a third row. Come on in. Now you know what? I need to see all of your faces. I am Roy Don Chase, and I was the first postmaster for Anchorage. I was the postmaster from 1914 until October of 1915. That means that I was here for Tent City down by Ship Creek, and I had a post office that was part logs and part tent. We had some logs at the bottom and then a tent at the top. And I lived in a tent down in Tent City with my wife and two children. That wasn't very much fun down in Tent City. And then in 1915, in June, they sold the lots up, up top. We didn't have this log cabin to move in immediately, so we moved our tents up there and set up our tents and lived in the tents while the cabins were being built. And this is actually the cabin that I lived in in 1915 until October. The children, after they came home from school, had more chores to do. In the wintertime, they had lots of snow to shovel, including some of the snow off the roof, but not all of it because we needed some of the snow for insulation.